Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. And today we are taking another look at our ECX Ruckus two wheel drive. Now we've been doing a full buildup of this truck with a couple of things in mind here. Just um, durability is top of mind here. We got this ruckus actually off of ebay it was in excellent condition the previous owner did a lot of modifications that we were planning on doing on anyways um so rather than continue with our ultimate ruckus for the time being we decided to just build up this truck so just to review some of the parts that we put on and you can see a comparison here um this is our are now torn down shell of a ruckus or torment they're pretty much the same except for the body mounts tires um, actually just the front body mount tires bumper we actually went with the torment bumper on uh, on both of these trucks just because it provides a little uh, actually a, a good amount of extra protection on the sides the front of the sides and also it is longer so uh, you have more of a, a crumple zone, so to speak, with the Torment bumper. Um, you could see just the differences between these two in terms of the uh, the build-up too. We've got the RPM arms, not a necessity, but again, the previous owner put these on already. You can see the stock arms on this one. Um, the they didn't put on the the rpm spindles on this but uh, the stock spindles again are just fine the previous owner also upgraded to traxxas adjustable front links you can see the solid links here stock um, we upgraded to aluminum shocks the ecx aluminum shock option um, the plastic ones are known to leak uh, there are aluminum hexes on here as well and we put um just a, a Traxxas Teflon washer. Let's show you the package here. These are made for the slash, stampede, etc. Just to take out some of the play here um, between the hex and the wheel, and also to give it a little bit of a, a buffer uh, because we noticed some wear on that hex on the inside there. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Um, we, oh, we ran out of super glue. One of the uh, the modifications that you must do on a ruckus if you have it apart um, or you risk losing these shoulder screws these uh, special shoulder screws um, that you pretty much have to go back to your hobby shop to get if you lose one of those and you're out of commission um, you want to put a dab of super glue on the threads for those screws and when you screw it in uh, just to keep it in place or else you know we've had a couple of those fall out on us um, we ran out of super glue, or rather we didn't want to crack open another bottle because it uh, it hardens and um, you know just uh, we'll, we'll get around to super gluing a whole bunch when we get the chance or super gluing other parts. We like to do things in batches um, just for efficiency reasons. But um, since uh, the one on our ultimate ruckus are already super glued, we're just going to go ahead and borrow those. So just to remove them, um, just unscrew the upper link and we noticed, um, you know, this, our ultimate ruckus was also a used chassis that we got off of eBay, much worse condition than uh, the, uh, the ruckus you see to the right there. Um, even little things here, like this was a very well used chassis versus this one was pretty much brand new, so your your mileage really varies on on um, eBay. You you've got to really look at those those listing pictures to see the the condition of the truck before you buy it. Um, you'll notice here that even the, the pivoting of these plastic links is is very limited because the um, you know the pillow balls, so they're called, are are just completely smashed in. So it, versus it being able to give you um, a degree of freedom like the the new pillow balls that have been mounted on these um these uh these tracks uh adjustable links here right that one has no no ability to pivot um and you can just notice the difference in the uh the suspension too just it's it's really been tightened up um 
by switching over to the uh, the upgraded parts there. So you know, it not not a huge thing for a basher, right? But um, if you're you know if you're into precision driving, um, which we aren't necessarily, but um, it's yeah, it's always nice to see the difference that uh, some upgrades will make. Um, so the next thing is to just take out the screw here that captures the hinge pin in. It's really small screw, so be careful not to lose it. And, you know, one of the reasons also that we, we halted uh, or paused the build on our ultimate ruckus um, is that we couldn't find the um, upgraded metal drive shafts that we wanted to use in stock. So we wanted to use the Hot Racing, uh, and Hot Racing has a couple of, you just want to use this same screw or same hex driver to push out the pin here, the captured pin. And then you can pop out the whole hub assembly. Simply twist it a little bit to pop the ball out of the socket. And we've freed that up now. So we'll just put this chassis to the side here. And... Go ahead and get a flat tipped driver to pop out the hex. Now, another reason we want we wanted to switch over to these other um, hubs and bearing sets that we had are that uh, we put in sealed bearings here versus I'll show you guys the metal sealed bearings. Over here, so rubber sealed bearings versus metal sealed. Metal sealed actually have lower friction because that rubber seal will introduce some drag um, and friction. But the sealing aspect of the rubber seals is well worth it because it will uh, much better shield the the ball bearings inside from the elements, from the dust, dirt, um, grime, etc. So. Just another benefit of, of switching over to this other uh, steering knuckle that we had built up. And we also switched over to a just a longer um, socket capped screw here, right? Versus the uh, that's fine threaded versus the coarse threaded screw on this other side. So I'll show you what that looks like just by popping this out. So you can see the difference here between the coarse head and the fine head. We're using a little bit of extra length there because uh, we noticed that um, the screw wasn't going through all the way through that that steering uh, the C hub. Right? And you see, you can see we had we had a this is the the longest screw that we could find that wasn't too short. It pops out a little bit over there, but that's okay. I mean, you can even put a nut on there to to, um, to make sure it really doesn't come out, but probably overkill. And removing the hubs out of the, the C hubs out of the RPM arms, very similar. And I'm not sure, you know, the previous owner, of course, built this up. So, you know, it uses a different set screw. I'm not sure if uh, the previous owner just put in these um, these different typeset screws, or if they come with the RPM arms. I don't think they come with the RPM arms. I think he, the previous owner, just put these in. But you can see the difference there. These are three millimeter versus I, I think probably a two millimeter uh, diameter screw. And yeah, so not sure. Um, that's what happens when you pick up a project from somebody else, not necessarily a bad thing, but just something to keep in mind. And then you just put in the driver, X driver, pop out the arm, or sorry, the, um, uh, I don't even know what to call it right now. It's probably, <laughs> uh, 
uh, pin, suspension pin. And similarly, just twist it a little bit to pop it the ball joint out of the plastic link there. And for a replacement, we'll go ahead and grab that hex. Uh, I'm going to show you guys where I put in that washer here. So this one, okay, I was going to say the, the play on this one seemed a little bit less, but I'll just put this on anyways. And again, this Teflon washer, not absolutely essential, but we had some of these on hand and we're doing a build up, so might as well use one of these. So very thin Teflon coated washer. Um, just to take out some of the play there, as well as give some uh, protection to that aluminum hub that we're using. Okay, so just putting that pin into, and the tolerances on this one seem a little bit tighter, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, that actually impedes. I can feel the bearings now. So we might not use the Teflon washer on this side. Go ahead and pop that pin out. Yeah, it's a lot tighter on this side. And that might be a difference in the um, thickness of the bearings there. We're going to go ahead and remove that washer that we just put in. All right. Put the drive pin back in and Ooh. that was not a good pin to drop, unfortunately. Working on a hard floor here. A lot more difficult if you, yeah, so I can spin that a lot more freely and have that pin fall, fall out again, but um, yeah, the introducing that Teflon washer on this side um, didn't work as well as it did on the other side. Just, you know, m manufacturing tolerances are different, but you can see a little bit of wear there on that hex. It's okay. Um, that's the whole point of why we wanted to introduce the the um teflon washer but not a biggie all right just making sure everything turns freely and we'll just go ahead and put this back together so um you can notice the wear on these suspension pins too the difference between the one on our ultimate ruckus and uh, our new one here, not not huge, but you can just see some of that finish wearing off. So we'll go ahead and get this back together. Thanks again for watching. Uh, let us know what you guys think of this these uh, videos. If you are enjoying the the ECX uh, ruckus slash torment buildups, um, we've gotten a lot of good comments. So we'll keep the videos coming. Stay tuned. Until next time.